All right, Shalom. Rastafari. Shalom. Salam to basically. Um, this fit is going to basically be, we're still in the, the 39th of the political week of uh, who caught the Rastafari to get into study number 39. We left off roughly around water from a rock. This portion here, we touched on our own death. Um, not in the way we would want have wanted because of the passing of our Rastafari elder, um, Ross ESP. Max Pearson, Ross Everton, Pearson, May, Ja, and Joshua, and Yeshua HaMoshiach, rest his soul. And may he inherit that, that receive that resurrection. So we would be sorry, but we don't be sorry not, rather. You know, we're somewhat, you know, we weep, we, we feel it, but we don't sorry as those who have no hope. Let, let's remember that because in truth for I and I, Rastafari, and for all the faithful in Yeshua HaMoshe, all the faithful in Christ, there is no death in that sense of death due to the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of the Moshiach and the word of the Father Abba. But what we want to touch on right here, and we have to clear this is the reason why I just mentioned that again, in um, this recording, is we want to continue and go into a little bit of detail on the particular issue. Um, I think we called it, um, we said so-called Rasta, not to be derisive or anything like that. The person did not really state it, but it's obvious that they're wearing, you know, the colors, so forth and so on, which means that there is some sort of um, a, a affinity on some level. And, and when you listen to how different Rastafari, different ones, how different one makes their claims. It's kind of what causes this confusion, legally speaking, when we seek to go to the international, the global level. Because first of all, being Rastafari, when we say I and I is Rastafari, and we make that connection with Tyler Selassie, with Ethiopia, with this, this commonwealth, with this with this covenant and this legacy that we call Ethiopianism or uh, Ethiopia we met, um, it's a claim. It, there's a claim. And, and that's when one makes a claim, one must um, prove that claim. You understand? So it's a positive, it's a claim. We say, I and I is Rastafari, and we're making identification. Now, one of the brethren, one of the first, let's see if we can bring this up, one of the first, um, Respondents to the to the vid that we had um, posted is a brief video from I think uh, We the People show Gloria Allwright is the um, is the, the judge or arbitrator. Um, she's also an attorney and everything has been involved in a lot of these kind of so-called high-profile cases. But now she's doing the TV you know the TV court TV kind of circuit and whatever. But anyway, this particular clip, we got a heads up about it and was able to catch the clip at the very point in time when after the judge hears the plaintiff, then she turns to the defendant. Um, and the defendant is, is, is the, the woman, the wife, the sister, and the, the, the female. But the male there is a Rasta, Rasta-ish, a Rasta individual. Um, or Rastafari, and, and, and we're going to clarify why we speak in that way because it's very important to understand what the clip is really showing I and I. Now, one of the first respondents, let's see if we can um, find this right here. One of the first um, respondents to the vid that we posted, and I want to get their, their, exact, um, their exact statements and not, and not really my own. I want you to hear the exact statements. You can go to the, you know, you can go to the website, um, the Ethiopian World um, Net on the YouTube, and we just want to sign in right here. Ethiopian World Net. And those who are able to download these vids and back up these vids and stream these vids on their website. They will be highly advised 
and encouraged to do so because some folks might not understand these things now. You know, you hear some people shake their head and say, well, I don't think so, or it doesn't go like that, whatever. But it's good that they hear it. And then perhaps later on they might think different of it. It's good to have these sort of resources because there's nothing like that really going on in the way that it should be going on. And so hopefully we will in inspire or motivate rather. May the Holy Spirit inspire you, but may we help to motivate you in the Holy Spirit to basically um, follow Yeshua, follow Christos, follow Christ and kingly character in your particular walk or call. You understand? And this is part of the, the, the work of faith, the labor of love that we conduct right here. So anyway, so the vid, here's the, here's the video right here. Um, so one's the one felt that, well, perhaps it, it, that, that was not the best example the best example because it's the whole issue of um, it basically comes under the issue of here exemption if you really understand it basically comes under the issue of here exemption and the bid is called so-called Rasta in court waves his quote natural Rasta Parai and quote religious Rights, and then we put the UNDR, the UNDR article, article, um, article 18. All right, okay, so let's see if we can bring this around right here. All right, so what was said is this. Let's scroll this up right here. What was said is this, um, brother, how does taking off his hat? misrepresent uh, Rastafari. I do agree brothers out there and I have misrepresented the true Iesus Christos, but I do not, I don't know if this is the best example. Um, and they said, Wa Da Da. I guess Wa Da Da Bamarinya properly um, Wa Da Da. Wa Da Da. Wa Da Da. In other words, Wa Da Da means to like to love to what they be inclined to, to have an inclination in the positive sense of what is interpreted or taken as love. But this is also very important about learning our language. The old sentence Arastafari. Because what does Arastafari really mean? We cannot define that or get to the real roots. We talk about the roots. The roots are contained in our pure language according to the scripture, according to, I think it's, um, what is it, Zephaniah 3 and 9, verses 9 and verse 10, it speaks of us from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, how he would turn to us a pure language so that we all may call upon the name of the Lord, upon the name of Jah, upon the name of Yah, upon the name of Yahweh, with one consent. So it's the unifying factor rate right that one consent is the unity. And his imperial majesty even says to I and I, he says that language is the key of culture, the key of, is the key of culture and communication between man and man. But for us, the language, learning the pure language of our Godfather, the King of Kings, the, the royal Amharic, it is, it is wana wana. It is like the main, main thing. There's nothing really more um, important as a foundation for us than language. And even in many other, um, in the Abrahamic faith, and we are really the fulfillment or perfection of the Abrahamic faith. This is speaking about Judaism. This is speaking about um, Christianity. And even to a certain level, is speaking of Islam, of the original Muhammad, of the black Muhammad. But that point, because there's a lot of religious kind of confusion and turmoil, we're not going to really even touch on that or go into any detail right here. But we have touched on some of the reference points elsewhere. So what we said is a good point. We, um, we acknowledged, you understand, we acknowledged that that was a a good point. That was a very good point right there. Um, that was made by I and I um, brethren. I think that was um, either I, Jah, Levi. 
Ijah, Levi, Hela, Salam to, to you and to the, the family and to all of those who love the King of Kings and his Christ. So our, our response point was that we acknowledged that it was a good point and we said we need to clarify. So we said stay tuned, John Willing, for a video for this as, as uh, we just caught the scene only and a few brief, we uttered a few brief words um, concerning it, but we couldn't really get it into fully because the scene was over, we, we muted it, and then I think it went to commercial and we stopped it right there, you understand? But in a lecture situation, like this would be like a continuation of that particular video about our natural, because Rastafari, I and I say, I and I is the natural man. Are we just speaking of the so-called flesh? Are we just speaking of um, one-third of the triunity of the spirit, soul, and body, only in body? Are we so-called, quote, natural? Are we will seek to defend I and I rights, or is it fully? That's what we also included, the religious rights, you know, the religious rights. Now, yes, I understand, and probably a little bit better, and all thanks to the grace of Yeshua HaMoshiach, better than many, you know, in this word religion. Because most folks cannot get beyond the barrier of the Eurocentric languages. So when they're speaking about religion, people say, oh, I don't do religion, I add in spirituality, because religion means such and such and such. And they always stop. It's like almost like the River Jordan. They always stop in the, in the kind of um, Eurocentric world of maybe they, they might go to the Latin. You understand? But they don't go further to our true root and find out, well, what does His Majesty mean when He speaks in translation now? What does He mean in Amharic when He speaks on religion? Because for us to say, okay, we're not dealing with that, and then our Godfather, the King of Kings, whom many of you will say, well, He is God, and we want to touch on His Haile Selassie God. I mean, and it's very important for us to, some of you already know, you always send the correct answer to these questions because you've been studying. You've been studying the scripture. You've been studying the law of God, the, the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And it becomes very, very clear. You always send, especially even through the connection of the Judaic or the Jewish Trinity. You always send, or the Hebraic Trinity. The God of Abraham, Yisachak, and Yaakov, who, according to Yeshua HaMoshiach, is also the one that is the resurrector. He's the one of the resurrection where Christ says that, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead, because the name Yahweh, when you when we get to the root or Ehya Shara Ehya refers to Hewit. It refers to Ehyo. Ehyo. You understand? But that's Ethiopic. That's getting to our pure language roots and a lot of these other confusions are clarified. But the point about waiving our, um, you know, about waiving these rights, and, uh, and so one will say, as the brethren said, said, okay, yeah, I, I hear you, but I don't think it perhaps is the, um, is, 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 is the best point, you understand, and then we, we, or the best example, rather, to make the point. So we say, um, the brethren, um, first of all, should not have stepped into the square. Now, I hope you understand what I mean when you step into the square. Let's understand what a court is. Because when we chant and praise and Rastafari and we talk about entering into the courts of the Lord, let's understand it's more than just a so-called religious thing, but there is law when we, when we step into that square. You understand? And now what we see in the mundane or among the Gentiles is a... Is a is, is like a bootleg on, on that level of the divine order. You know what the Babylonian world is a poor bootleg, but it's based on the principles, and these principles have us in a legal, you know, saying conundrum because we're ignorant of the law. And any judge or any attorney or anyone who works in the the legal system will tell you that ignorance of the law is no excuse. Now, in our ministry, we actively minister to many Rastafari brethren and dreadlock brethren that 
incarcerated begins to see the light of Rastafari and start to make some connection by being able to fellowship with other Rastafari brethren and information exchange and people study the word and the scriptures and in that sort of situation they find the time um, to grow. In other words, those who are incarcerated on various um, frivolous and human rights violation part of this trafficking and modern day form of slavery so forth and so on but when we boil everything down it comes down to the same principles I'm using the word principles instead of using the word principles I know people say principles okay translate for me principle in Amharic and translate principle in Amharic and show me the primary sources or evidence you should be able to do that if you can't, then what are you defending? Are you defending your own imagination? Are we defending the teaching of His Majesty and the testimony of His Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach? Right? And this is not about no black supremacy or, you know, white supremacy. It's about God's supremacy. It just so happens, you understand, that Yeshua is what you would call African and black. And this is why we reaffirm that. But not to say it's a black thing, you understand, you know, for black people in that sense only the truth. You understand, really if we knew what we are supposed to know, you understand, we would recognize the blessing of the true and the faithful Gentiles. You understand, and also the stagnation of the movement because we are not, we, we don't understand the system of governance that he has given us because we don't understand the law and we still are failing to shimma, to hear, and to obey. So we're going through, this is why this, we're still in this sort of Gentile conundrum. This is the, the overstanding of that. But our, our point was that he should, have, he, he should not have stepped into the square with it on, right? With it on, and, and then have or be advised, we didn't, say, we didn't say by the judge, but then be advised, right, to take it off. And besides, it's not so much of, it's, it's not about which is the best example. In other words, we're, we're not trying to find, like, a gotcha. This is not a gotcha point. This is not, you know, Rastafari, true Rastafari. We're not playing gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Or, you know what I mean? Or, um, um, open correction is better than secretly, you know, secretly concealed affection. You know, then open rebuke is better than an iron sharp and iron. So, our point further was that we, I and I, all have fallen short of the glory or the honor of the King of Kings and His Christ. We could put a period there, full stop. stop. Yet, and still, we have to strive for excellence. And, and the you know, we could refer you straight to the teachings of His Majesty on all of these points. You understand, there's numerous references, you understand, within the teaching of His Majesty. Now, if it's not going to be about learning and doing and acting on the teaching of His Majesty, then it's a fraud when I'm dealing with carrying the name Rastafari or even misrepresenting or associating themselves with the King of Kings and, and, and His Christ, consciously, unconsciously, willingly or unwillingly. All right? So we have to strive for excellence, right, i.e., the perfect example of Rastafari Abba for Yesu's sake, for Yeshua's sake, for Yehoshua's sake. All right? Now, um, this uh, Rasta's doing in a court of law is just an example because many of us might have been in these sort of situations. I have been in court and I, I kept on whatever head covering, you understand? In fact, I think in most situations, besides maybe one situation I was asked about it, I mentioned basically, like, yes, it's my religious, it's my, it's, it's my religion. Now, you always say, no, it's not a religion, it's a spirituality, and you cannot define either or word according to the context, the true square, the true court of Rastafari. This is why he says study, this is why his majesty, is his education is the key. You understand, he even connects that a lot of the pitfalls the people went through and go through is because of ignorance. You know, that people say, well, people don't know no better. Well, why don't people know any better? 
You understand? Well, that means that the people who know and don't teach or communicate to others, they are culpable. You understand? They are culpable. And that's also a legal phrase, but it basically means they are guilty. You understand? So in a sense, he entered into the square, right? The brother entered into the square. He entered into the court of law, right? And his doing, as many of our doings in ignorance, not learning these things, not iron sharpening iron and strengthening the, the younger races, you understand, and the so-called newborn, the younger brothers and sisters in the true way, it leads to this astray way. And another vid we wanted to touch on is, is the inertia. Is Rastafari truly moving as it should be according to the teaching of His Majesty? Or are we in a state of inertia? In other words, movement or inertia? Rastafari movement or inertia? Question mark. And getting some of the details on that. Now, we said that his stepping into the court of law, this can become you know, or by the art of law, and the art of law is the art of debate, the art of reasoning, reasoning, you know, saying reasoning and arguing out your point and proving your point and providing evidence of your point or your claims. That means once you do that and, one's, and, and your point and claim is established and once violate, then it's war, basically, then it's war. It, it, you, you see, so a lot of y'all want to jump off before you have done the first, you know, the first thing first, the first work first. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference between a warrior, you know what I'm saying, and a true, a true soldier, according to the teaching of His Majesty and the testimony of the Moshiach, Jesus Christos. Now, here it says that um, it can be construed. Now, this is what happens. These things become construed, right? Um, to set a precedent. So you walk in court, right? First of all, you walk in court, and perhaps you, you overstand your rights. You are defending the birthright. You're living within the covenant, you know? And because a lot of other rosters and other so called went into court and did a lot of crazy stuff or acted wild, or, and then we don't say nothing about it. You know what I mean? We don't say nothing about the, the bad action or the inactions of others, iron sharp and iron. And then Babylon now or the world or the other nations look at us and say, well, all those people are the same thing. You know what I'm saying? And we wonder. What, and when they, these, these ones who are walking funny in Rastafari, when they then do something against us on a personal level, then I now have a problem with that bread train, that cis train, so forth and so on, right? You, you know the, but you could have nipped it in the butt, you know, if you were paying attention, you know, saying if you were on point, you know, and we're supposed to be like that watchman, so we see danger or trouble, which is to blow the proverbial, um, realistical trumpet. So that can be construed to set a precedence. And precedence, this is also another legal matter, and it's also connected with the King of Kings, it's connected with, with our imperial, um, royal covenant. Ethiopia, we met, uh, Ethiopianism way of life, our holy covenant way of life. It sets a precedent, all right? And the precedent, therefore, really boils down to a matter of who to honor or who to dishonor. Honor slash dishonor. So whose name do we carry? Is, is how I ended off that last, um, that last uh, response. Whose name do we carry? We carry Rastafari's name. But that's so what we begin off with the name first. If you cannot define the name, you'll sit and spend time overstanding the name is so important. Even from the scriptures, when Mashu, when Moshe, when Musa was speaking to the Ehyeh Shara, he says, well, he says, um, the God of the Hebrews, tell them that the God of the Hebrews has sent me, but they'll want to know, well, what is his name? Notice that. They want to know what is his name. The God, so think about it for a moment. If the God of the Hebrew was the only God, in a sense, right? In that time, in that situation. Remember, they were in a society like the society we are in. This is why the scriptures call it spiritual Egypt. There's a lot of different type of versions of Christianity out there. And notice this in the clip. The judge says, um, um, when she was about to turn to the woman, 
um, I guess his wife or sister and or so forth and so on. When he turns to the woman, he says, oh, I see you brought so-and-so who is so-and-so, um, and I see you wearing a hat. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This right here, in that sense, this right here would be a hat. Yo a barneta. Barneta? Barneta. Well, a hat. Let's just say hat right now. We'll clarify the wrong word. You understand? Um, right? A hat. This is a hat. Do you notice, like, the so-called Hasidic or Hasidic, uh, Hasidim, you understand? Um, they might have a mulka, a yarmulka on, and then they will have maybe a hat, you understand, over that. If they end up in court or whatnot, they'll take the hat off, they'll keep their fringes and everything else, which is part religious, part cultural, so forth and so on. But once you deny, and I think it's a trick of the enemy, you have to understand this, once you deny your God given, and this is all because of the legal. Remember, we are we are not under law because of Christ. But if we deny Christ and deny to walk and to grow into Christ, we fall to a lot of other things. This is how we fall short of that kub, that 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 honor, you understand, or that particular glory. Now. Gloria, all right. Interesting, we just about Gloria for a moment, but Gloria, all right, right. Um, she acts, and, and as a judge, as a jurist, she did she did well. She kind of showed us how it so-called should be. She acts. She said, well, you know, she, maybe he got shook. This is what I was thinking. You know, maybe he got shook because otherwise, why are you gonna go all the way there? You could take it off your, you know, you, you knew where you was going. You know, you could take that off and presented it. But his doing sets a precedent so much so that if I went to court and had my hair wrapped up and a lot of y'all's calling yourself Rastafari and, and walking funny, you understand, not to the glory of his majesty, but walking funny and everything, have gone there and waived all your rights, and then you identify as Rasta. I go there, and, and the judge says, uh, uh, would you let down your hair? I'm like, let down my hair? Yeah, would you unwrap your hair? It looks like a hat. It looks like a turban or something. You know what I mean? Uh, no, no, Your Honor, um, you're in a court of law, but this is, this is my religion. You understand? They would say, religion, okay, yeah, culture, spirituality. I understand, Erasta, Erasta, you know what I mean? You're dealing with some Classy, Ethiopia. Uh, I mean, there, there were others here, you know, I've, 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 I've adjudicated before Erastas before, and they've taken off their hats yeah, and let down their hair <laughs> and been manipulated like they got no honor have been dishonored in court, and I want to dishonor you on the square. That's why it says that the, the wicked, the, or the unrighteous, rather, cannot stand in the judgment. Because when it turns to him, remember, our righteousness is not what we do. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's who, you know what I'm saying, we have faith in, who we have our main in, true and faithful witness in. So when she turned to him, she said, um, he was like, I think he started talking, he, he was like, it's his, his, his culture, and then he quickly went to spirituality, so he said spirituality, culture, but culture and spirituality came out almost back to back. Oh, man. Remember what the teaching of his majesty is, that our culture is through our language, and our language, and the manuscripts, and the scriptures, and our divine heritage, and this is what we should be disseminating, so forth and so on, because once we know that, we'll know our so-called rights. He could have he stayed there, but he went on to say, oh, she, she went on to clarify when, she, when, he, when he said spirituality. She was like, uh-oh, because see, 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 when you come to these points, in, in legal uh, 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 adjudication, the judge had to clarify. So the judge wanted to clarify, you understand, like which particular, like there's a fork in the road right here with spirituality. Are you saying spirituality like nowadays people say spirituality? You understand? I'm not the religion, I'm not the organized religion, I'm the spirituality. All right, cool, whatever. Or are you saying spirituality in the sense of religious? In other words, does it have foundations? Can it, is it defendable, you understand, or is it bulldozable? Like, you know, when you hear a lot of folks, it's why a lot of us should really be cautious when we're saying, well, Rastafari is not a religion. We are saying in the Eurocentric sense by those who are institutionalized, you understand, in religion, we're not in any of your institutions, but under your law or in in, 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 
in the sense of law, uh, the, the, the so-called common law, and even international law, and, and what's known as law, where, where our rights are defendable, you know, and it does come under that religious. And, and I just want to make this point, why it's so important. Because of those brethren who have communicated to us who are incarcerated, you know what they want from the society? And, and the churchical aspect especially, is the here exemption for religious rights. It's the here exemption, the religious rights, it covers the here, not having the here cut, you understand, or subjected to any sort of um, dishonor, you understand, it, their food, you understand what sort of food, you get ital food or non debtors or at least kasha, kosher, halal, on that sort of a level. And the time that they have an opportunity to have the Shabbat and have time together, you know, understand, away from, you know, other prisoners and other activities, have religious or spiritual time, Shabbat time, you understand, time to study, to reason, to build up, to so forth and so on, to pray and to worship. Without that, they could go to prison and, and you know, and the judge say, well, uh, and, and see, a lot of them, a lot of folks get themselves in trouble at first because a lot of ones are teaching ones that it's, it's not a religion and not really clarifying that when we say it's not a religion, that is a private matter. That's a private conversation we're having when we say it's not a religion. It's not a matter. Once you go into the square, you have to understand that you're on different, you're on different territory. You understand? When you're in that square, it's just like when, when the tabernacle is set up, and we are supposed to get the living tabernacle. When the tabernacle is set up, it is that tent, which is that square, that house, that bait, so to speak, and then there's that courtyard around it. If you were to walk into the holy tabernacle or the Mishkan space, the tabernacle space, you know what could happen to you? It's first of all considered by John's law to be trespassed, to be trespassed, it's, it's what you call trespassing, it's like if you go in somebody's house, somebody's home, and you were not invited and you had no rights in there, they could kill you, they could kill you, according to, I mean, according to biblical law, and it's from this biblical law in Britain, it became common law, and now it's written into the statutes and the code, so forth, and so on. And then from, from that, we get to stand your ground sort of things. So we have to overstand this. If we don't overstand this, then there's no reason to try to attempt to stand up and be Rastafari, because we're doing it in ignorance, and we're shaming not our name, but we're shaming his good name. And this is the reason why there's so much mix-up and confusion, you know, surrounding Rastafari, surrounding repatriation, Ethiopia, the World, World Federation, Shashimani, you know, and some folks don't want to admit it. Why? Because if they admit it, perhaps they're part of the problem and not part of the solution. You know, and they can be, if they be, make their wills obedient to good influences. If they hear the teaching of His Majesty and take it to heart, you understand, they can be a part of the solution. So it's really up to them and it's up to I and I. So that point is very, very important. You understand, because you could take, we've seen other ones with dreadlocks or whatnot, and before they even get in there, they take it off. And there's also been ones who have kept their, their head covering, their head covering. But most likely, if he said religion, Right, if he said it's my religion, he would not be able to defend it. But it shows you that if you want to talk about um, no religion and all this nonsense like the Gentiles, or like the Goyim, if you want to follow in the worldly way, then you're going to end up in the same situation. You'll say in the same situation as that particular brother in, and even worse. Think about it for a moment. If you were to say and answer her, she said, is it your spirituality, you mean like in the sense of religion? And you're like, no, like culture, like, you know, like la da 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 whatever. You know, you know, it's changeable. There's no, there's nothing that is above the level of the court. Because still above the court, it says, in God we trust. You understand, the Bible is still a part of the court system. It must 
B in order for it. It's, it's like the generator, the power source, even of the Gentiles, is, is, is the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Is the scriptures. That's, what, that's in a sense what it means, the powers that be are ordained of God in that sense. It receives an ordinance. It receives a dispensation. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, it really has no right from, from heaven or any rights that should be respected on earth. So she asked him, do you mean religion? And she was like, and then he said, but before, he, before she even finished, she was like, well, I could take it off. And that's what showed me that he probably was a little shook. And not shook because he's a coward. It's not a personal point, as we mentioned a bit. It's a point of principle. You know what I'm saying? It's not that he was shook like, you know, like he, he was shook because he probably didn't know how to defend it. Just like a lot of y'all probably don't know how to de defend it. And probably watching that video, you don't really find anything wrong with it until you end up or until if you're faced by another sort of a situation. You know what I'm saying? And, and remember, it, it's creeping. It comes in increments. In other words, if you allow this right to be waived, then how could you then want this right to be defended because waiving this right then connects with that right? And then, so, it's like a creeping coup. Eventually, you, you know, you're a mockery. You become a mockery because of forces in the world that you were in ignorance of and most likely because you wanted to do your own thing. You understand? That you want to be a Rasta for yourself instead of a Rasta because you didn't know the, the, the language. You understand? You wasn't interested in the language. You didn't receive the Holy Spirit, the Isla Iret. You understand? All you wanted to do was look like a Rasta, but that's making it bad for us and for our children and our women and, and the next generation because we have to clean up that sort of mess. Because now when we go forward and we say, well, well, um, Your Honor, it's not a hat. It's not a hat. It's a tan. Then, then somebody would say, oh, my crown. Now, if I went up to him and took it off, right, you know, like his brother in, you know, so-called horse playing, I don't know about that. But, you know, he would say, man, you know, don't spoil me time. Don't spoil me crown. Now it becomes your crown. Why didn't you say it was your crown when you went to court? Yo, would they laugh at you or something? So then why did you take it off before you walked into the square? I mean, it looked beautiful. I was like, that's how 12 tribes used to be. Even in court, 12 tribes of Beta Israel went to court, you understand, and defended just like that. You understand, back in, we could say, those days, so forth and so on. Because it's a, it's a Bible-based Rastafari um former federation, Ethiopian World Federation, but Bible-based community, faith-based community, you understand? And they're one of the ones who really quickly overstood the importance and the role of us defending our legal rights because it affects our commerce, you understand? It affects our monies. And some think that when we're speaking about these particular issues, we're only talking about spiritual issues and we're not concerned with the economics and the commerce. That's a, that, that's a foolish assumption. Let's just put it like that. Because what a lot of folks don't recognize, they're running after commerce but don't understand law. You understand? And any 13 or 14 year old um, yeshiva studied Jewish boy can run ropes about, around them. You understand? Even if he's not very acquainted in, in the legal system, but by studying Torah, automatically you begin to see how things work, how things operate, you know what I'm saying? But without that, you know what I'm saying, you basically destroy yourself, you know what I'm saying? If you can't defend your rights, your personal rights, how can you defend your property rights? You know what I'm saying? It's like back in the days when we say, man, don't enter into my, no, don't enter into my cipher, man, don't enter into my circle, like somebody walking up to you too close. You know what I mean? It's like, what is, it's like a violation. And if you study law, there's something to that too. In some situations, you could be considered on trespassing somebody's personal space. Unless it's some type of crowded situation where you don't really have any presumption. You know what I'm saying? Like an elevator or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But in some other situation, you're in a park and somebody wants to sit next to you. And you move and you say, come on, get away from me. And they sit next to you. You have a right not to have anyone in your... Because there's still other... It's still there's no event on the lawn 